Thanks for clicking on this video. Welcome to the beginning of my savings, budgeting, and YouTube journey. I am here to represent the hardworking, low-income single parents. On this channel, I am experimenting with different budgeting styles, savings goals, and sharing the strategies I learn as I go. So if that sounds interesting at all to you, please go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to follow my journey. I am going to show you my August budget breakdown. Um, so this is something new for me. I am just learning how to do a monthly budget and I'm, I, I'm very glad that I am because it's helping me better prepare for the months upcoming and helping me catch anything that I that comes up unexpectedly. Because August is a magic month for me, um, I get paid bi-weekly. So this month, August, I get an extra paycheck. So I'll get paid on August... That's the month. So I'll get paid on August 2nd, August 16th, and August 30th. So this is a budget binder that I made myself. This will help me kind of break down each paycheck, give me a month overview, and help me plan any of the expenses that come out throughout the month. Um, so, for, so for August, since I have the magic paycheck, I wanted to show, I wanted to do like a brief breakdown of every paycheck. So I wrote those down here. This is just in my scribble. I didn't plan on showing this, but I think it might help some people. I just wanted to make sure that every bill got paid and that I had some extra money because I do get an extra paycheck. So I wanted to make sure even though it's an extra paycheck, the bills are still getting paid within the time frames that they're due. So normally I just split the bills into two and I have a cheat sheet that I use. So that's this. They're split into check A and check B. But since I have a third paycheck, I still wanted to make sure everything got broken down appropriately. So instead of using my cheat sheet like I usually do, I actually am doing a budget by paycheck. So my cheat sheet makes it a little different that these aren't always one after the other. So usually I just pay the bills on payday. It doesn't matter when they're due. Half of them get paid on one paycheck and half of the other bills get paid on another paycheck. But this time I made sure that they are paid within the time frame that they're due. So I'll show you that briefly. Um, this phone is dying, so I wanted to show you really quick. Um, so for the month, I wrote down all of the bills. You can see all of the bills here. You can see all of their due dates. I crossed this out because the month is just an overview of a projection. So I wrote down the projected of what I plan to pay. I got the total there. My variable expenses is usually $4.25 a week. So I multiplied that by three and I got the $12.75. Savings comes out automatically $100 a week. Um, $25 a week goes into my car note fund and $50 a week goes into my child savings account. So I just multiplied those all by all by three since I have three paychecks. Those come out automatically. And then seeking funds, I had a little leeway with that. So once I calculated everything else, I was able to add some money into sinking funds. So that gave me $352 that I can contribute to sinking funds. And also I project that I'm going to be able to pay $152 for my credit card instead of my usual $55. So that's the goal. So the goal at the end of the month is to have only $100 left on my balance for my credit card. And I don't have any unexpected expenses that have come up so far, but if they do, I will put it into this account and um, I'll have to move some numbers around if they do come up. But you'll see here, I did the breakdown. I took the $3,900, which is my estimate. I always estimate with $1,300 every pay period so that I can make sure I pay all of my bills and variable expenses. So this normal budget, normally it doesn't always have any sinking funds, um, but usually I work some overtime. So that's where my budget for sinking fund usually comes from. But since this is a magic month and I get the extra pay period, I have a lot more that I can use for sinking funds and I was able to pay more for the credit card than I normally will. Also for the buffer, again, since I have this magic month, I want to put more money in my buffer. What I have been doing, if you've seen any of my other videos, is just putting $10 in it. And that's not enough, clearly. Um, I would like to build that up. So my plan for this month, I don't know if I'm going to get there, but the plan is to add um, $240 total for the month. So that'll be enough for $40 into each of my bank accounts. 
um, my checking accounts. I have a one main checking account and then I have another bill account. So I want to have put $40 every pay period into each of those accounts so that I build up a $240 buffer overall. And a buffer is something that you keep in the bank. Um, you don't touch that money. It's just something that you use if there's ever an emergency or if there's a bill that comes out more than you expected or a bill that you forgot about. So it's just like a safety net. Um, and also if there's an expense that comes up outside of that that you need to use that buffer for that's what it's there for it's just your safety net that you keep in your bank account so um this sinking funds challenges again this is where i played around with what i always do is i do my fixed expenses the buffer came last and i do my variable expenses and then i do my savings and then if i have any money left over that's where i'll decide what to put in debt what to put in buffer and also what to put in sinking funds. So you just wanna make sure that you always have your bases covered first. So I wanna show you that. So these are my bases. These are my fixed expenses, my savings, my variable, and then I break it down here to show you. I have showed this cheat sheet several times, so if you haven't seen it, you'll see it in my other videos. I also made myself a cover key for my binder that I made um, so that I can remember each month I put tabs in here as well. So each month I've highlighted my fixed expenses are in red, variable in blue, statements in green, debt in red, and yellow is unexpected. So I made changes to that. Um, so August is good to go. That's the plan for August. All of these totals amount to zero because I do the zero-based budget system, meaning that every dollar that I plan to get has a plan for it to go. Now, tomorrow what I'll do is I'll be able to log into my internet at work. Um, I'll be able to log into my work website and see how much my paycheck will be coming up on the 2nd. So that's coming this Wednesday, but I can see ahead of time how much it'll be. And then I'll be able to do my bi-weekly budget, which will be done on my bi-weekly sheet. So this will show you August 2nd through August 15th. That's what I'll be budgeting for. And here, this is my sinking fund spreadsheet. What I do is, um, what I'll do the day before I get paid is write down the balances that I have left in each account. Then on payday, I'll write down what I am contributing and what that new balance comes out to once I've added it. This is for anything that I add or subtract throughout the pay period. So if I spend anything or if I have some more money or some rollover that I want to put in there, that's where any additions or subtractions will come in so that for the next pay period, I can do the same thing. There'll be a balance here, how much I get paid, what that new balance comes to, if there's anything that I add or subtract throughout the pay period, and the end of the balance at the end of the month. So since there are three pay periods instead of two, I made an extra C um, sinking fund so that I can add that to the total as well. So I've showed everyone these. I'll show you my uh, bank breakdown when I do that as well. But I'm glad I added the little tabs so I already have a plan for each of the three pay periods of what I want to spend. But again, when I see how much it actually is, I'll be able to um, break it down to the dollar what goes where so, so that there's no surprises. So this sheet will get filled out last once I actually get the paychecks so that I know if there's any rollover. What I have decided to do is I'm not going to plan for any rollover. That just messes me up. I'll just plan for a zero beginning balance. So tomorrow, what I'll just do is write on a piece of paper what the plan will be. And then I can do a final if there's any rollover or any extra money in my accounts that can go to sinking funds. That way I won't be as confused in what's going into the bank account. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> I will see how much my paycheck will be and I will write out the budget plan for that. And then the day before payday, which will be Tuesday, I will write out here what my beginning balances is, balances are so I can add that to my beginning income. So that way, by the end of the month, I can see how much I have left over, what I spent where, I can close it out. I haven't been able to do that in months past because I have not written down my bills by exact dollar amount and expenses. Um, I've only been tracking my variable expenses, but from now on, I will be tracking both. 
So I'll be checking my checking account balance, my main checking account balance, and my cash expenses. I will track all those here. And then I have an account just for bills. The bill account will go track here. Again, you don't. this is not something that you have to do. It is good to track. If you don't do anything else, it's good just to track to see what categories you're spending in or if you can adjust anything. Um, but this closeout, you definitely don't have to do. So this closeout will be something that I do either bi-weekly or at the end of the month to see how much are in sinking funds, how much I've contributed how much I'm taking out same thing with my variable expenses which I keep in my binder or slash wallet I did buy myself a wallet you guys so I will come and show you that whenever it comes um, so that's something that I bought for myself for my birthday I took that out of birthday funds but I also found out when I went to do my midweek check-in I checked my bank account and I did get the check from my car insurance company. If you don't know, if you haven't seen my other videos before, I got a check from the car insurance company and um, I was a little more than I expected. I think I expected like $6,000 and it was a little more. So I do have some cushion in my bank account right now. Um, we'll plan where that goes. We'll see how the rest of the week goes. I won't plan anything with it until the night before I get paid. So, but what I'm hoping is that the extra money that I have that I was going to deposit back into the bank. Um, so I'm hoping that the extra money that I was going to deposit into the bank that's here, um, I'm hoping that I can keep that and roll it back over into either my sinking funds or into my variable expenses. So we'll see how that goes, but I just wanted to come in quickly and show you that. Um, of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put it in the comments down below. I'm always here to answer any questions or anything you need clarified if for any reason this did not make sense. Sorry that this video is a lot faster than the other ones I've done, but I think it was pretty simple and straightforward. And I don't want to confuse you um, with anything extra because this is the basics of my August budget. It. so that's it for me today thank you so much for watching as always please remember that it is about progression and not about perfection thanks so much everybody bye mm -hmm.